It's only one chapter. But the temple that I was talking about that Solomon built lasted 437 years. And then because of the people backslid and God allowed a foreign power to come in and throw, overthrow their country and burned Jerusalem and burned that beautiful temple. Now the years have passed and the people have been looking at that ugly ruins of the temple and sad and depressed for a long time until God sent a man of God with a vision, with a vision for a new temple. Just like I'm giving you this morning a vision for a new look for our church to the community. The Attorney General said 22 years ago that we have turned this place into a beauty, turned an eyesore into a place of beauty. We want to expand on that beauty. That's the vision. Glorify God. So Haggai saw the vision, and I'm going to read it to you, part of it, and you can read it more and study it on home. But here's what the Lord said to Haggai. Verse 2, chapter 1. This is what the Lord Almighty says. He's speaking to the people. There, the people say, the time has not yet come to rebuild the Lord's house. And so Solomon built it, but now it's a rebuilding project. We're kind of in the rebuilding projects phase here. And so, so the people kept saying, why now? Why now? We, we, we're comfortable. We like our homes. We like, we're comfortable here. What, what's wrong with keep on doing what we've been doing? And, but God said the number one thing is the timing. There's a time when God is ready to move. And you can get ahead of God or you can be so far behind God that you never see the miracle. The time to jump is when God is ready to move. And I'm telling you, for us, that time is now. But the people are saying, what, what's the hurry? The time hasn't come. That's what they're saying. There will always be negative talkers that say, oh, what are we doing that now for? Don't he know we just came out of a pandemic? Don't we know we just started back to work? Yeah, God knows. But, so don't let, don't use the timing excuse. Verse Three, then the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Is it a time for you, he said, he told them, for you, to, you, for you yourselves to be living in your paneled houses, your nice homes? house and be honored by it. God says, I'm honored when my house is beautiful. You expected much, he says, to, still talking to them. You expected much, but see it turn out, it turned out to be a little. What you brought home, I blew away. Why? Because the Lord honor says, because of my house which remains a ruin. 
God won't bless a mess. He says, while each of you is busy with your own house, therefore because of you the heavens have withheld their rain, and they do, and the, and the earth is crops. I called for a drought on the fields and the mountains, on the grain and the new wine, the olive oil and every, everything else the ground produces on people and livestock, on all the labor of your, your hands. So that's what God says. I want to fast forward to save time. But God, God's the, he, he, the leaders were moved. Zerubbabel, the king, was moved. Joshua uh, was moved. The high, pri the high priest was moved. And it says in verse, uh, verse 5, the people obeyed. Isn't that a wonderful, wonderful thing? When the people obey God, the voice of the Lord their God, they obeyed the voice of the Lord their God and the message of the prophet. Because the Lord their God had sent him and the people feared the Lord. Then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, gave this message of the Lord to the people. I am with you. That's what I want you to think about when you're praying about your pledge. Remember, the Lord said, I'm not sending you out there by yourself. I am with you, declares the Lord. So the Lord, listen to this, verse 14. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel. That's the king. The son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah. And he stirred up the spirit of Joshua, the son of Josadak, the high priest. And the spirit of the, he stirred up the spirit of the whole remnant of the people. That's what I'm asking God to do today. Stir up your spirit to say we got to glorify God and honor God with our church building. They came and began to work. Everybody say work. They came and began to work on the house of the Lord Almighty, their God, on the 24th day of the sixth month. Now fast forward to the next chapter. And here's what God said. Verse 19, the last Line, from this day on, God said, from this day on, I will bless you. Isn't that good? Amen. What does giving do? There's two ways that we give. Two, one is our tenth, our tithe. And there's a set of promises that goes with that. If you don't, if you, if you haven't done that, you need to buy my book, The Tithing Manifesto. But there's a set of tithing, and many of us have learned to live in that blessing. Well, what tithing does, it brings the blessings of God where you used to live down here in poverty. God has raised you up to a level of prosperity. Not the highest level, but you're a comfortable level. But, but giving, when God brings an opportunity for us to give, Giving is a separate part. It's not the same as tithing. Tithing is the tenth. Tenth, it's, 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 that's a tenth. That's our weekly, monthly, or consistent giving that keeps us living on this good level. Thank God we're not living down there. We're living up here. But now God says, I want to bless you on top of that. I want you to move you up here. This is Luke 6, 38 is the promise to the giver. Give and what's going to happen? He said, it will be given unto you. Raises are going to start coming. Promotions are going to start coming. Profits are going to start coming. And God says, I'm going to build up, build you up to here. You, you used to live here. Then you learned to tithe and now you're living here. But God says, my vision for my people is to prosper. In 1 John uh, 5, 4, uh, 1 John chapter 3, he says it's uh, God's will that you prosper. God wants you to prosper. Not just get by. 
paycheck to paycheck. Thank God you got a paycheck. But God says, I want you to be prosperous and blessed where you can give anytime you want to. And, and live with it. Praise the Lord. You get something out of that? So there's two things that I want you to adjust. Number one is the timing. The time is now. Second of all, the priorities. And, and, and Haggai the prophet drew the parallel between your house and God's house. God says, my house is in disrepair. It's down here, but your house is comfortable. I want you to put the priority on God's house. Let's make God's house better than our house. Amen. And God will get the honor and the glory. Praise the Lord. Clap if you got something out of the word of God today. Praise the Lord, Sister Rosalind. Amen. Don't hurry her. She's writing down what I said. What time is it? Ooh, that's right. Blessing time.